पाकिस्तान के खिलाफ बहुत सारे महाज खुले कुछ हमने खुद खोले और काफी सारे हमारे खिलाफ खोले गए आज के महाज अमरीका के नाम कहते हैं कि अगर जी एच क्यू मतलब रावल पिंडी मतलब हमारा जो असली दारुल हकूमत है मतलब फौज का जो हेडक्वार्टर है अगर उधर पहुंचना हो तो सबसे जो तेज सड़क है वो वॉशिंगटन से निकलती है जो अमरीका कहता है वो रावल पिंडी में मतलब जी एच क्यू में माना जाता है ये पुरानी एक पाकिस्तानी सियासत की कहावत है कुछ हद तक ये सही है पिछले हफ्ते में हमने देखा कि जैसे ही अमरीकी कांग्रेस को पाकिस्तानी डायस्परा ने फोर्स किया अमरीकी कांग्रेस के कुछ लीडर्स को लेटरबाजी करके आ, को लॉबी करके आ, को कन्विंस करके आ, को प्रेशर करके जैसे पाकिस्तानी निजात अमरीकियों ने जिसमें बहुत सारे पीटीआई के भी लीडर्स हैं जैसे ही उन्होंने कन्विंस किया आ, जिन दिनों में उन दिनों में यूएस स्टेट डिपार्टमेंट इधर की वजारत खारजा इकोनमी की बजाय थोड़ा बहुत डेमोक्रेसी के बारे में जमहूरियत के बारे में इलेक्शन के बारे में भी बोलने लग पड़ी बहुत सारे लोगों ने इंक्लूडिंग पीपल ऑन द शो ने इसको एक विक्ट्री समझा पीटीआई के लिए इमरान खान के लिए मगर कुछ लोग डिसएग्री करते हैं हम आज उनमें से एक एक्सपर्ट माइकल कूगलमन ऑफ द विल्सन सेंटर से बात करेंगे माइकल ने हमें आज एक बहुत स्पेशल इंटरव्यू दिया है साथ साथ बहुत एक दो बड़ी खबरें भी दी हैं वॉशिंगटन से जो पाकिस्तान के जनरल जब सुनेंगे तो आपके साथ साथ वो भी चौंक जाएंगे एक खबर तो यह है कि अमेरिका जो है वो अफगान तालिबान के साथ बातचीत फिर से कर रही है दाइश जिसने कल ही में पाकिस्तान की इस साल क्या दूसरा सबसे डेडली अटैक बाजोर ट्रैवल एजेंसी में खार तहसील में किया दाइश के खिलाफ अमेरिका और तालिबान अफगान तालिबान अब साथ काम करने लग गए हैं कल इफ्तार फिरदौस ने हमें खबर दी थी कि पाकिस्तान भी इन्वॉल्व होगा इस इस नए अरेंजमेंट में जिसमें अमरीकी तालिबान और पाकिस्तान साथ काम करेंगे मगर आज वाशिंगटन से हमारे इस स्पेशल प्राइम टाइम में हमारे पास जो खबर है वो उसको काउंटर करती है पाकिस्तानी जर्नैलों को चौंक जाना चाहिए क्योंकि लोग अब वाशिंगटन से कहने लग गए हैं कि पाकिस्तान इन्वॉल्व नहीं होगा अमरीका और तालिबान अकेले काम करेंगे अकेले इनका इतिहाद होगा पाकिस्तान इस इतिहाद में इन्वॉल्व नहीं होगा पाकिस्तान की फौज को एक और स्नब मिला है जितनी आपने जितने इनके पांव दबाए हैं वाशिंगटन के उतना आपको इन्होंने दूर ठुड्डा मारा है साथ साथ आज माइकल के साथ एक और इंटरव्यू के दौरान में हमने एक और बड़ी खबर निकाली है कि इमरान खान की वजह से इमरान खान ने जो हाल किया था पिछले साल अमेरिका में शायद उनकी वजह से आज स्टेट डिपार्टमेंट पाकिस्तान की सियासत पे पाकिस्तान की जमहूरियत पे बोलने के लिए थोड़ा सा टेंटेटिव है थोड़ा सा हिचकिचा रहा है मगर जो मेन खबर आई है वो ये आई है कि चीन और पाकिस्तान अब अफगानिस्तान में फिर से वही बाहर से देखेंगे और अमरीकी और तालिबान जो हैं वो अफगानिस्तान को अंदर से देखेंगे इसकी सिक्योरिटी इंप्लीकेशन क्या हैं पाकिस्तान के जो जर्नैल हैं वो अब जो उनकी आजकल जो हमने देखा है वो समझ रहे थे वो समझ रहे थे कि अफगान तालिबान उनके कंट्रोल में हैं और इसलिए वो जो धावा है वो आप पे खोल सकते हैं वो जो धावा है वो जो तोपों का रुख है इसलिए उन्होंने अंदरूनी जो लोग हैं अंदरूनी जो एलिमेंट्स हैं पीटीआई वगैरह जो हैं उसकी तरफ किया जो क्लियरली नजर आ रहा है जिसकी वजह से सिक्योरिटी लैपसेज हुई कल भी हमने ये सवाल उठाया कि जब आप अपना असली काम नहीं करते जब आप सरहदों को डिफेंड नहीं करते जो मैंने अपना करियर आपके साथ लगाया है डिफेंड करने में क्योंकि आपको आता है जब आपको जो काम आता है जिस काम के आप पैसे लेते हैं जब आप वो काम नहीं करते तो और चीजें होती हैं जैसे अब होने लग गई हैं तो उसकी क्या कीमत है ये सब जो आज सवाल हैं कल तो हमने इफ्तार फिरदौस जो दोहा में थे उनके साथ बात की आज हम वॉशिंगटन की तरफ तोहफों का रुख कर रहे हैं इट्स अ फैंटेस्टिक शो मुझे बहुत मजा आया अंग्रेजी में इंटरव्यू है मगर उर्दू में ट्रांसलेशन है बड़ी खबर है कि पाकिस्तान को स्नब किया गया है बड़ी खबर है कि इलेक्शंस की बातचीत हो रही है मगर अमेरिका इन्वॉल्व होने की कोशिश नहीं कर रहा वॉट इज दिस मीन फॉर यू एक आम वोटर एक आम शहरी एक इन्वेस्टर एक 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 ऑर्डनरी सा सिटीजन चाहे आप पाकिस्तान के अंदर बैठे हों चाहे आप पाकिस्तान के बाहर बैठे हों चाहे आप डायसपरा का हिस्सा हों चाहे आप मेरी तरह बेचारे हों आप जरूर जरूर शेयर लाइक सब्सक्राइब कॉमेंट करें द रेस्ट ऑफ द शो इज डायनामिक मैंने करना था 20 मिनट का हो गया ये 40 का क्योंकि माइक ने इतनी इंटरेस्टिंग और नई और ताजा में बातें बताई स्टे ट्यून फॉर दैट एंड एंजॉय द रेस्ट ऑफ द शो
ओके तो अब तोपों का रुख वॉशिंगटन की तरफ करते हैं वॉशिंगटन कहते हैं कि अगर पाकिस्तान में पॉलिसी इफेक्ट करनी है अगर जीएचयू में पॉलिसी पॉलिसी इफेक्ट करनी है तो सबसे जो तेज तरीका है वो वॉशिंगटन के जरिए सबसे जो तेज गाड़ी जाती है पिंडी वो वॉशिंगटन से जाती है एंड व्हेन इट कम्स टू वॉशिंगटन ऑफ कोर्स वन कैन नॉट गेट थ्रू द वर्क मंथ विदाउट आर ओन साउथ एशिया वाला द द वन एंड ओनली माइकल कुगलमन डायरेक्टर ऑफ द साउथ एशिया इंस्टीट्यूट at the wilson center how are you my good morning good morning to you uh, it's great to be here i'm well and hope you are too thank you it's been a while but uh, um something which i sent out recently on on uh, whatsapp uh, has triggered this and with your permission i am going to share our whatsapp exchange so i wrote uh, i wrote to mike maine mike ko likha ye maine likha ke apna maine bheja aur main bahut sare doston ko bhejta hu to maine bheja a uh, dna special report uh, from us congress pakistan is finally debated in the us congress should pakistan's generals be worried about upcoming resolutions and hearings and mike just said i don't think so <laughs> <laughs> and that that is that is the premise of our interview today uh, mike so let's let's try to agree to disagree or disagree to disagree wherever this may take us so my premise is simple uh, michael ke liye mera sawal bada aasan hai कि मैंने कहा कि यूएस रेजोल्यूशन शायद अब हो जाएं कांग्रेस से हेरिंग्स हो जाएं कांग्रेस से डंडे चले जब वाशिंगटन में तो क्या पिंडी को फर्क पड़ेगा नहीं पड़ेगा माइक डिंक सो माइक का नहीं ख्याल के पड़ेगा सो माई क्वेश्चन टू यू माइकल कुगलमन इज वेरी सिंपल पीपल आर दिस इज अनप्रेसिडेंटेड एट लीस्ट इन द लास्ट फिफ्टीन मंथ्स वी हैव एन हर्ड और सीन दिस लेवल ऑफ ऑफिशियल एंगेजमेंट एट द लेजिस्लेटिव लेवल in fact the organizer who i spoke to said that he had 30 30 uh, uh, uh congressmen and women uh, at his uh, disposal who wanted to participate in this he said i held back he actually used those words he said i held back for reasons i can't disclose but clearly the diaspora feels like this is a victory imran khan feels like this is a victory his friends on social media feel like this is a victory I'm not going to call it a victory but I definitely think that this is not just a storm in a teacup uh if if hearings are next and if uh well um if some sort of a resolution is next but you seem to disagree the floor is yours Right I'm always happy to uh, agree to disagree with you my friend but uh you know on this uh it certainly is a very interesting development and you're right that um you know it has been some time since we've had such a high level interest in on capital hill about domestic issues in in pakistan and specifically the uh, the state of democracy and uh, and human rights uh i would not say it's unprecedented though um you know we have had cases in the past there've been briefings on capital hill uh about pakistan um there've been hearings on capital hill about pakistan but um if you look at this in the context of the broader US response to developments in Pakistan over the last year plus you know certainly you know Washington has reaction has been fairly muted so in that sense i would agree with you that um the fact that you have this uh quite well attended briefing on capitol hill featuring some pretty significant members of congress uh who are in the room speaking weighing in that's significant but where i think we disagree is on you know the 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 implication question you know the the, the sort of what's net what next factor because i know that um you know certainly many in in pakistan that support uh pti and imran khan hope that this will be the first salvo the you know the, the first salvo of some type of major campaign that leads to a galvanizing of the Biden administration to take on more of a role and take more of a position in terms of what's happening that's that's where we 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 disagree you know i, I mean I, this is obvious but sometimes one has to state the obvious or restate the obvious capital hill uh does not set policy it doesn't make policy it passes mm. laws it makes key decisions about foreign policy such mm. as uh, provision of aid monies and so on but it does not drive policy um mm. and so i think that one has to keep that in mind and you know you look at what we've heard from the administration the executive branch of the us government in recent uh weeks and recent days yes secretary blinken uh, had a call with uh with his counterpart in pakistan the foreign minister 
And there was a statement released by the U.S. side that said that quoted Blinken saying that, uh, you know, we believe that uh, democracy is a big part of the U.S.-Pakistan relationship. I agree that that should be seen as an indirect reference to the ongoing crackdown in Pakistan, you know, given the timing. I mean, the, the language itself was fairly anodyne. But the fact that that statement came from Blinken, the guy mm. at the top, mm. at a moment when this crackdown is happening, that's significant. But, you know, what does that mean at the end of the day, right? Has the U.S. – let me be very provocative. Not very provocative. Let me be somewhat provocative. I'm like, back <laughs> to you. Has the U.S. By, – by all, by all means, be very provocative. This is uh, apna hi ghar samjo, as they say. <laughs> gotcha. Open season. Um, <laughs> it is. So – let me let me just say this. Um, when has the any U.S. government seriously prioritized democracy in its relationship with with Pakistan? Right. You know, going back many years, for example, something to 1971. You know, we all know the position that the U.S. government, the Nixon administration, took when the Pakistani military was um, uh, was carrying out this uh, these horrific acts of violence that many describe as genocide. You know, the U.S. government was firmly behind that for geopolitical reasons related to China that we don't have to go into. But, you know, fast forward to, to more recent years, we've talked about this a lot. Uh, the U.S. government has tended to privilege relations with uh, with the generals and the uh, the military folks, which may be which may help advance U.S. interests in Pakistan, but it certainly does not further democracy. Um, there have been some exceptions, you know, the Kerry Luger Berman bill. Um, there have been efforts to try to strengthen civilian institutions and democracy, but I would argue at the end of the day, the major U.S. objective or objectives in Pakistan do not include promoting democracy and trying to weigh in and becoming a, you know, a big advocate for the restoration of democracy or anything like that. So that's why, that is why I, I, I politely disagreed with your, uh, with your assertion. Okay, I will uh, let that slide, but I'm going to, uh, uh, for the sake of our audiences, I'm going to paraphrase this as well in Urdu, with your permission. And I know your Urdu is pretty decent, Mike, so help me out here. So, Michael says that, yes, uh, to some uh, uh, degree, they agree with me, that it's been a while, it's been a while, that this is the way that Pakistan is happening in Pakistan. They say that it's not unprecedented, it's not the first time they've been happening. I said that it's just this. Okay, unprecedented for the last 15 months. That's what I'd said. Unprecedented for the last 15 months. But the hearings have been So we agree there as well. One uh, critical thing that Mike says, he says that this is the congressional leadership. He says that this is the congressional leadership. He says that this is the hill, the capital hill, which is the parliament, the parliament, which is the hill, which is the policy. If you have to give F-16, then the hill. कानून लिखती है कानून साजी करती है मगर देना लेना खत्म करना बेचना बूचना पैसे देना ये एग्जीक्यूटिव ब्रांच का काम है व्हाइट हाउस का काम है डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ डिफेंस का काम है डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ स्टेट का काम है वो पॉलिसी बनाते हैं ये लोग पॉलिसी नहीं बनाते तो इससे फर्क नहीं पड़ेगा यस माइकल ने इस बात से एग्री किया कि हाल में जो कुछ स्टेटमेंट्स आई हैं उससे लग रहा है कि शायद इसका एक इफेक्ट हो इन इन किस्म की स्टेटमेंट्स का जैसे इनके जो وزیر خارجہ हैं एंथनी ब्लिंकन ने जो बोला है हाल ही में बलावल भुट्टो जरदारी से बात की फोन पे और फिर उसके बाद ट्वीट किया उस ट्वीट में कहा कि डेमोक्रेसी जरूरी है पाकिस्तान और अमेरिका की रिलेशनशिप के लिए इसको लोगों ने शायद आगे ले लिया जैसा भी कर लिया मगर कह रहे हैं सिग्निफिकेंट है मगर इतना सिग्निफिकेंट नहीं स्पेशली अगर हम बड़े इसके कॉन्टेक्स्ट में देखें कि 71 से लेकर अब तक हम अमेरिका हमेशा पाकिस्तान को पहले जियोपॉलिटिकली पहले देखता है अपने वो फैक्टर्स पहले देखता है 71 में जब पाक फौज ने जातियां कि बांग्लादेश उस जमाने में ईस्ट पाकिस्तान में जेनोसाइड हो रहा था तो उस वक्त वो टॉलरेट कर गए अमेरिका जो है चुप रहा उन दिनों में और बहुत चुप रहा और उसका जो इफेक्ट है वो वो वाजे है सो जियोपॉलिटिक्स आप कह सकते हैं ज्यादा रीजंस हैं जो शायद पहले आते हैं पाकिस्तान को देखने में और इसलिए डेमोक्रेसी जब सफर करती है जरूरी नहीं है अमेरिका आई होप आई आई नेल सम ऑफ दैट माइक आई होप यू एग्री विद माय पैराफ्रेजिंग um if and i apologize if i didn't uh, if something was lost in translation but um i want to move on quickly uh to uh the other uh side uh of uh, of the pond um rather uh, the stretch uh, 
rather the Durand line, uh, because that's what they call it these days. Uh, so yesterday, we had uh, uh, the second deadliest uh, terror attack uh, of the year in uh, uh, the tribal area known as uh, Bajor. Uh, you are familiar with this area. You've covered it, written about it extensively. Um, I spoke to a leading journalist there, Iftikhar Firdos, our common friend and colleague, um, Iftikhar uh, had some interesting takes because he was actually coming back uh, into uh, the country from Doha, from Qatar, where um, he said he's hearing that the Americans, and this was, frankly, this was, this was a pretty big deal uh, to any ear which, which, which heard him, that the Americans are finally uh, uh, actually operationalizing their relationship uh, with uh, the Taliban uh, to counter ISIS uh, uh, KP. So, so, so in the which is the local version of Daesh, and that he's also hearing that the Pakistanis, um, the uh, Americans, uh, the Afghan Taliban are going to be working together, and there's even talk of a, a Chinese involvement uh, in this counter-terror mechanism, so that there's a sort of a regional mechanism uh, in place. Now, this is unprecedented. I mean, the Americans have. Have, uh, have have fought the Taliban for most of the last uh, two decades. Um, um, in fact, all of the last two decades. Um, this is this is this is news to my ears. But then, um, when I was prepping for this, I came across this article, which where the the, the U.S. president had actually, in a very off the cuff the remark recently, said that yes, we are working with the Taliban, and there's no Al Qaeda uh, in in Afghanistan. Um, Please uh, uh, help me with my bearings. I am reeling with shock. The, the, the United States is going to be working with the Taliban, the Pakistanis, and the Chinese. What are you hearing from Washington for this counterterror mechanism? Well, indeed, uh, you know, I, I have also heard uh, through some good contacts that, um, you know, there, there certainly is um, something happening uh, in terms of uh, movement toward some type of uh, discussion talks between uh, uh, U.S. and uh, Taliban officials about counterterrorism, specifically <laughs> specifically ISK. Uh, you know, I haven't heard many details, and certainly I'm not in a position to, uh, to confirm that. But uh, I think that uh, it certainly is very significant, uh, you know, this idea of you know, the U.S. government working with the Taliban on any level is significant. But, you know, you may remember uh, some months ago, I think uh, it was uh, not long after the U.S. withdrawal was completed that there was some some deliberations about the possibility of you know, the U.S. and uh, and the Taliban uh, agreeing to bury the hatchet and uh, concluding that they share a common enemy in um, in in ISK. But I think within the analytical community, this is all outside the government. The conclusion was that it simply could not work. That it simply could not be a reality where you would have. U.S. officials working with the Haqqani network folks, you know, as you know. Oh, I know. I can't, I can't fathom it. <laughs> yeah. the Hikan, And you'd have to work with the Haqqanis because the Haqqanis control the interior ministry, right? Um, so it makes it makes no sense. But then, you know, you look at some of the data points that have come. Uh, you know, as you know, uh, just over a year ago, there was that successful uh, operation to eliminate al-Zawahiri. And, you know, many have wondered, well, who was helping the United States? Who were the eyes on the ground if they weren't Americans? Were they Pakistanis? Mm. Pakistanis would certainly deny that. Of course they did. <laughs> yeah. Uh, who could it be? Could it have been? Uh, anyway, so, you know, we, we really don't uh, know. But, you know, I think that Biden's comment, which was very off the cuff, and it was hard to know exactly what he was saying, but indeed he did suggest that the Taliban have helped. Now, he was referring to help in dealing with the al-Qaeda threat. Mm. Honestly, I think if there's any chance of, of, of something happening between the U.S. and the Taliban on CT cooperation, it would not be regarding al-Qaeda. The Taliban do not turn on their allies, uh, on, their, yeah, on, their, on their allies, on their, on their militant friends. Al-Qaeda is a very long, for, is long-standing friendship there, but ISK is different. Mm. So I think that's what we'd have to look at. Um, but um, it's it's just it still boggles the mind. I mean, anything is possible, and you know, in, in IR and geopolitics, you know, enemies can become friends uh, fair, you know, soon enough. I mean, obviously, you know, we look at the the history of the U.S. involvement in Afghanistan over the years, right? I mean, the U.S. was uh, was backing the Mujahideen, Mujahideen forces for a number of years. They morphed into the Taliban. Things change in a big way. 
So you, know, you can't rule this out. But for me, and I'll end here, it is, I don't know how you translate this into Urdu, even though even my amazing Urdu skills would not be able to find a translation for this. <laughs> what I describe in, in English is the ick factor, you know, this idea of, you know, U.S. officials actually tolerating the idea of, of sitting alongside, uh, you know, the Haqqanis and actually working formally with them in any way, given that the Haqqanis killed Americans for many years in the U.S. were, were fighting the Taliban and so on. That, I think, is um, is a constraint. But that might be a naive position because, again, relationships can change in a hurry in very drastic ways in international relations and sometimes quite quickly. Right. I'm going to paraphrase that and then take you to the second part of that question. So, um, Michael ne uh, kaha ki yehi sun rahe hain, jo maine poocha. Maine Michael se poocha ke uh, Pakistan uh, se khabar, khabar aa rahi hain ke ab Amerika, Afghan Taliban aur Pakistan aur shayad Chin bhi ek saath baith ke uh, Daesh se ladai karein. Ab uh, ye, mujhe isliye ye bahut badi khabar mere liye isliye hai, aapke liye bhi hai, hum sab ke liye, kyunki Amerika aur Taliban ki to दो दहाइयों से लड़ाई हुई हुई है और उधर दूसरी तरफ अमेरिका की चीन से भी खैर ज्यादा दोस्ती नहीं है ना पाकिस्तान से ज्यादा रह गई है तो ये क्या हो रहा है तो उन्होंने भी कहा कि यस कंफर्मेशन तो नहीं है मगर ही इज आल्सो हियरिंग के ये भी ये ये है मगर ये बातें जो हैं साथ काम करना दीस हैव बीन हैपनिंग फॉर अ वाइल और मुश्किल होगा काम करना आसान नहीं होगा उधर हकानी नेटवर्क के साथ कैसे अमेरिकी बैठ के काम कर सकते हैं कैसे अमेरिकी उनके साथ इंटेलिजेंस शेयर कर सकते हैं उनके साथ ऑपरेशंस कर सकते हैं मगर हमने कुछ देखा है जैसे और बीच में दरड़ाड़े भी पड़ी हैं जैसे अलकायदा की दोस्ती है तालिबान मेहमान नवाज रहे हैं तालिबान ने नाइन के बाद जो जंग हुई थी वो अलकायदा के लिए छिड़वा दी थी और जवाहरी उस जमाने में उसाम बिन लादन और फिर जवाहरी को गिवअप नहीं किया था उन्होंने और फिर भी थ्रू वट एवर मीन अमरीकियों ने टारगेट किया है काबुल में ही टारगेट किया है जवाहरी को तो एक कॉम्प्लिकेटेड डिबेट है मगर हो सकती है क्योंकि हर चीज पॉलिटिक्स में हर चीज बदलती है माइकल कहते हैं तो ये बहुत बहुत बड़ी खबर है वॉशिंगटन से कि अमरीकी और तालिबान साथ काम कर रहे हैं मगर माइकल से मैंने ये नहीं पूछा कि पाकिस्तानी और चीनियों का क्या एंगल है सो माइक इफ इफ यू हैप्पी विद दैट ट्रांसलेशन प्लीज एडवाइज ऑन द सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ ऑफ माई क्वेरी दैट um we can foresee a world uh, a, a brave new world in which um uh, us drone operators are sharing real time intelligence with the hakani network i mean i need to be i need to be that sounds like a netflix special that sounds like the the latest episode of uh, of jack ryan uh, if if they decide to redo a new season but 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 pray tell um what's the word on pakistan is pakistan going to be looped into this new mechanism or is pakistan going to be left out and also what are you hearing about china i mean the chinese working in a mechanism in a regional ct mechanism with the americans and the and the pakistanis and the afghans how is this going to work out your paraphrase was impeccable uh, it was meticulous <laughs> uh, well done um, <laughs> Uh, so, uh, no, this is a very interesting question about the Pakistan role in any type of hypothetical uh, U.S. Taliban cooperation on CT. It sounds strange even to say it um, hypothetically. I do not think that Pakistan, as envisioned by Washington, would play much of a role in this at all. And indeed, uh, you know, I had said earlier that some trusted contacts have stated there have been some, some, you know, some, some discussions between the U.S. and, and the Taliban. But um, those same contexts say that the Pakistanis uh, have not been involved uh, in those discussions. And quite frankly, if that's true, I could understand why, right? For many years, you know, the re one of the reasons why uh, you know, U.S. officials viewed Pakistan as a significant player in the Afghanistan context was not only because they were providing safe havens to the Taliban and so on, but also because they had that very special relationship with the Taliban, which meant that Pakistan could play the role of mediator. And that's essentially what Donald Trump was banking on when he invited uh, Imran Khan to help him bring the Taliban to the table for the, the talks at, in Doha. But things are different now, right? The Taliban are in control. And, you know, U.S. officials, they have their own channels to the Taliban, right? I mean, they've, they've met many times with Taliban leaders, not in Afghanistan, but you know, in, in Doha, and uh, that's generally where these these, engage, these engagements have taken place. You know, you have, a, you have a senior U.S. official, Tom West, at the State Department, who is essentially in charge of the U.S. policy toward Afghanistan. 
meetings have happened. So in that sense, Pakistan's utility as a mediator is no longer uh, needed. And mm. if you if you widen the scope even more, uh, the U.S. not too long ago um, designated um, uh, Qatar as the uh, the country that would represent U.S. interests in Afghanistan. It didn't it didn't choose Pakistan to do that. And one can understand why it it designated uh, Qatar, given that the Taliban had its its political base there for so long. So. I think that's one big reason to think that the U.S. would not have any interest in Pakistan being involved in these activities. And, you know, beyond that, I just don't think that U.S. officials view the future of the relationship with Pakistan as a security focused one. I think that they're looking more to the day when it be broader, albeit limited, and focus more on trade and, um, and, and commercial relations. And that's certainly the mantra coming from the U.S. ambassador in Pakistan and from officials at state here. Now, that doesn't rule out, you know, intel level discussions that you and I would never hear about, or maybe you would hear about them, but not me. Um, but I just, my sense is that, um, yes, Pakistan and China, we'll get into China in a second, and the Taliban and the US all see ISK as a shared enemy. But that's not necessarily enough to uh, suggest that you know, all these players would come to, uh, would come to the same table. Uh, I just think that the U.S. is perfectly comfortable if it needs to engage with the Taliban, including on CT issues, not necessarily involving um, Pakistan because it feels that the relationship with Pakistan need not be security focused. Keep in mind as well, U.S. security assistance to Pakistan, which is such a key component of the security relationship, has been frozen since the early days of the Trump administration. So I think that so long as U.S. security aid remains suspended, that, I think, limits the opportunities for security partnership between the U.S. and Pakistan, including in a hypothetical three-way or four-way arrangement with the, with the Taliban and, uh, and China. Final point, very briefly, on China. Yeah, China worries a lot about ISK, um, but um, I just don't think that the, 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 the relationship between the U.S. and China is such that it could entail collaborations on issues as sensitive as uh, counterterrorism, right? You know, the Biden administration may want to find ways to cooperate with China on countering climate change, which is a sensitive issue, but nothing like issues that are intel sharing intelligence on the movement and location of, of terrorist uh, uh, groups in, in Afghanistan. Wow. Okay. Well, um, skepticism there about China, but again, with your permission, let me paraphrase. Uh, I do have a, a counter about China, and then I want to get into the last bit, which is uh, doing a little bit of uh, tea leave uh, reading about uh, from Washington as well as from GHQ. Um, but uh, with your permission, Mike, um, Pakistan, uh, Mike, saying that this is the thing that is going on now, that the American and Afghan Taliban will be fighting with Daesh. Pakistan will probably not have any more role in this. Why? Because one of Pakistan's things जो जरूरत है वो अमरीकियों को अब नहीं रही अमरीकी अब डायरेक्ट हो गए उनके डायरेक्ट चैनल्स हैं अफगान तालिबान के साथ ये प्लस जो पाकिस्तान की तारीख है जो किरदार जो अदा किया है पाकिस्तान ने एक कह सकते हैं आप दोगला किरदार अदा किया है सेफ हेवेंस प्रोवाइड किए हैं तालिबान को एक स्पेशल रोल जो था मीडिएशन का जब इनकी दोस्ती की जरूरत थी जब इमरान खान को डोनाल्ड ट्रंप ने बुलाया था व्हाइट हाउस में कहा था कि भाई दोस्ती करवाओ हमने इधर से निकलना है मुआदा करवाओ खत्म करवाओ वो दिन चले गए इनके अब इनके अब ऐसे ऑफिशियल्स हैं टॉम वेस्ट जैसे लोग हैं जो तालिबान से रोज खुद बात कर रहे हैं तो पाकिस्तान की जो मीडिएशन की एक जरूरत थी उसकी जरूरत नहीं है ये हमने वैसे भी देखा है कि कतर को यूज किया है कतर ऑफिशियल जो है नुमाइंदा है अमरीका का अमरीका की एम्बेसी नहीं है आज अफगानिस्तान में कतर की एम्बेसी है वो जो है रिप्रेजेंट करते हैं अमरीकी इंटरेस्ट को यह भी वाजे करता है कि पाकिस्तान का रोल अफगानिस्तान में नहीं है उन्होंने पाकिस्तान को शायद जरूरी नहीं समझा माइक कहते हैं और दूसरी बात जो एक और एक पॉलिसी लेवल पे बात है कि पाकिस्तान को अब सिक्योरिटी फोकस जो एक पॉलिसी है वो नहीं रही थिंग्स हैव मूव्ड ऑन और ये एक इकोनॉमिक फोकस ट्रेड फोकस किस्म की अब इनकी जो रिलेशनशिप है आने वाले सालों में वो पाकिस्तानी भी ये कह रहे हैं अमरीकी भी ये कह रहे हैं और, और, और अमरीकी लीडरशिप पॉलिसी मेकर्स वगैरह थिंक टैंक वाले जैसे माइकल हैं वो भी खुद ये कह रहे हैं अब आई एस जो है दाइश जो है वो एक मसला है वो मसला अमेरिका के लिए भी है पाकिस्तान के लिए भी है वानियों के लिए भी है चीन के लिए भी है मगर इसमें पाकिस्तानियों का तो रोल आपने समझ लिया चीन 
کا کوئی اس میں شاید رول نہ ہو مائک سمجھتے ہیں یہ جو افتخار فردوس نے بولا یہ اس بات کو مائکل نے انہوں کو کاؤنٹر کیا ہے کیونکہ کہتے ہیں کہ چینیوں کے ساتھ اس وقت وہ حالات نہیں ہیں امریکہ کے کہ چینیوں کے ساتھ دہشت گرد عناصر سے لڑائی کریں گے اور وہ بھی پاکستانیوں کے ساتھ بھی کوئی سین نہیں ہے کیونکہ پاکستانیوں سے کافی عرصے سے ویسے بھی سیکیورٹی ایڈ سسپینڈڈ ہے اور رائٹ اف یو ہیپی ود دیٹ ٹرانسلیشن مائک ون لاسٹ پش آئی فائنڈ دس راد کنوینئنٹ اسپیشلی ایٹ اے ٹائم وین دا دا یو ایس پریزیڈنٹ از اسٹل آسٹ اباؤٹ ہز ریگریٹس ریگارڈنگ دی امیرکن وڈ رول in Afghanistan because we're heading into election season now and it's still a question which burns it's something which uh, the opposition can be expected uh, to uh, not really uh, capitalize on much but definitely uh, push forward if if things keep on happening uh, in that region moreover uh, i think uh, it's also uh, important to talk about the economics of this on the one hand the americans have blocked billions of Uh, Taliban uh, money, rather Afghan dollars, um, uh, on the one hand. I, again, I find this inexplicable to some degree that the, the U.S. has blocked billions of, of, of bucks, uh, which are owed to the Afghan uh, Central Bank or whatever their version of it. And then secondly, um, the Chinese are coming in a big way in Afghanistan. They are coming in guns and bulldozers blazing uh, with, uh, with their mining contracts, Uh, they have big plans for lithium. There's a lot of lithium we are hearing reports about. Lithium is a very sensitive, rare mineral. I mean, it's really important. This is, this is national security semiconductor level tech stuff, which, uh, which Elon Musk has been read into, etc. Right? So, uh, I mean, I, I find it quite convenient that the Americans are returning back to base in Afghanistan at a time when China's back in and at a time when uh, there is a bit of a, some sort of electioneering uh, to be done Uh, regarding this as well how how would you how would you explain that in the context of that mostly unfulfilled promise that no man will be left behind no no child no woman will be left behind which remains unfulfilled when it comes to uh, america's friends and allies inside afghanistan who helped her fight that war against terror right and on that latter issue i completely agree with you it it really is very sad that the us has not upheld its obligation to um to to bring out uh, those afghans that had worked with the u.s military or nato forces that that is that is a major failure on the part of the u.s government on the china factor uh look i i i have not been one of these folks that believes that china has been you know entering afghanistan willy-nilly since the the nato withdrawal and uh, developing a deep footprint i also do not subscribe to the idea that afghanistan is any type of battleground for u.s china competition i say that for several reasons one you know when the u.s was still in afghanistan both countries shared a lot of interests and goals in afghanistan uh you know they they both worried about terrorism they wanted to see it dealt with um and uh you know quite frankly both countries uh, wanted the us to leave afghanistan trump wanted to leave i'd argue that obama wanted to leave uh and of course biden ended up leaving uh and china was perfectly happy to see us forces leave one could argue that some of the regional players may have enjoyed free riding off of a nato presence thinking that that could make it easier for them to do business in afghanistan if you have us forces that can help maintain a security umbrella but no, china was perfectly happy to see us forces leave um but even after the withdrawal there is really has not been that much there have not been many new agreements that the chinese have signed with the taliban there was one there was an energy extraction deal that a chinese company signed with the taliban a few weeks ago or a few months ago but my argument here and this comes back to our focus on terrorism beijing will be cautious uh it is not going to commit to deploying significant amounts of capital not to mention significant levels of chinese nationals until it has better assurances on the terrorism concerns And yes, there is a big front page story in the Washington Post here a few weeks ago, or actually just about a week ago, about the, all this Chinese interest in lithium in Afghanistan. I'm sure you saw that piece. But that's not new interest, right? You know, there's long been this Chinese interest. You know, China has contracts for several mines in, in Afghanistan. It's not new, but not much has been done. Uh, you know, bad infrastructure and the lack of technological capacity have made it very difficult to um, actually follow up on these these pledges that china has made but it's the to 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 extract and and so on 
but it's the security issue that looms largest uh, here. And I'll say this, it's very, the timing was interesting. China, pardon me, yeah, China announced that energy extraction deal with the Taliban. I think the day after the Taliban announced that it had staged a major successful operation against Islamic State terrorists that were, according to the Taliban, behind an attack on a, uh, a guest house that had Chinese workers. So it's almost like once the Taliban you know, sort of made that clear that it was dealing with these Chinese uh, security concerns, then China was willing to turn around and say, OK, we'll take one step forward. Here's this deal. But my sense is that Beijing is going to be looking for a lot more results from the Taliban before it's willing to uh, to, to march in further. That, of course, that strengthens the view of those that think that China would be would want to be involved in you know, discussions with the Taliban on CT, not necessarily the U.S. Um, but but so I think that we agree on some levels here, but I, I respectfully, always respectfully disagree with you uh, on, on this issue or this idea of you know, China being on the ground, wanting to do things. The U.S. has gone. The U.S. has lost the strategic um, uh, the strategic competition with China. That's not it at all. All right. Okay. That's good. That works for me, Mike. I hope it works for our audiences. This is what Michael said. Michael ne bola ke wo agree karte hain ki America ne jis tarike se apne ittehadiyon ko, un logon ko jo uske partners the, unko chhod diya Afghanistan mein. Apni jo obligations thi, jo unhone promise kiya tha ki ham kisi ko piche nahi chhodenge, unko chhod diya Afghanistan mein. Magar China ke baare mein Michael mujhse disagree karte hain. Kehte hain. कि कोई नई एग्रीमेंट्स नहीं है चाइना की कोई और जो भी एग्रीमेंट्स हैं वो भी प्रेमिस्ड हैं छोटी मोटी एग्रीमेंट्स हैं एनर्जी एक्सट्रैक्शन वगैरह पे और वो भी प्रेमिस्ड हैं कि तालिबान कितना दाइश के खिलाफ एक्शन लेते हैं व्हेन इट कम्स टू के अमेरिकियों को पसंद करता था चाइना ऑब्वियसली नॉट और खुश था चाइना जब अमेरिकी निकले थे अफगानिस्तान से मगर अब जो भी है ये जो एक थ्योरी है कि क्योंकि अब चाइना आ गया है और इसलिए अमेरिका फिर से आना चाह रहा है वापस माइकल इस से एग्री नहीं करते वो अभी भी समझते हैं कि जो तालिबान है उसको बहुत काम करना पड़ेगा चाइना को सेटिस्फाई करने के लिए ताकि उस रीजन में इन्वॉल्व रहे इस खत्ते में इन्वेस्टेड रहे माइक लास्ट बिट आई नो यू गॉट गो इट्स इट्स वी वी रन आउट ऑफ टाइम गिव मी सम सम रियल क्विक टी लीव रीडिंग है आई मीन देर इफ आई वॉ आई एम वेरिंग माई आई एम वेरिंग माई फ्रेंड्स इन जी एच क्यू इन रावल पिंडी बट आई एम ऑल्सो बिसाइज दैम आई आई फर्स्ट वॉन्ट टॉक अबाउट माई फ्रेंड्स इन वॉशिंगटन द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ स्टेट हैज बिन बिजी फॉर द लास्ट कपल ऑफ वीक्स वीव सीन नॉट अ वेरी ड्रोमैटिक टर्न ऑफ इवेंट्स बट मैथ्यू मेलर हैज सेड Uh, the the e word uh, he's he said elections um elizabeth horst has said uh, the f word which is fair elections <laughs> and free elections uh, and uh, the uh, uh, the the secretary of state anthony blinken has said the d word which is democracy now they've, they've this has all happened in the last week 10 days um and a lot of people in pakistan who are affected by uh, the uh, unmitigated uh, clamp down crackdown uh, by the the military led establishment uh, have been waiting for this moment uh, with open arms that where uh, are the mighty americans where is that beacon of democracy and here they are muted but still and the very fact that this has happened in around the same time the legislators who we debated about earlier are beginning to percolate their opinion and make it seen shown heard and read um does say something doesn't it how should read those uh, tea leaves for me in washington and then perhaps read those for our friends in in ghq and raval pindi those generals who are watching this show how should they be watching it should they be concerned or they shouldn't really give a damn yeah so um i i should say that i myself have advocated um Uh, publicly for the US government uh, certainly the state department to have less of a muted position on the this uh, terrible crackdown happening in in Pakistan um and you know i've essentially argued that uh, you know the US the state department should not hesitate to issue a few statements saying that uh, you know we uh, you know we you know we support the idea of uh, rule of law 
democracy, free and fair elections, and so on. And the reason I've advocated for that is really on the grounds of public diplomacy, that uh, given that uh, you know this is a position that Khan has taken, and given that Khan commands significant levels of public support, particularly among audiences that the U.S. government views as strategic, that um, by not saying anything and by staying silent on this, you know, there's this tendency to think, I believe, in, among many in Pakistan, that uh, you know, the U.S. silence is really tacit um, support for this crackdown playing out. So that's the argument that I've made. Um, I'm not sure if anyone listened to me, but yeah, I mean, you're right. We have heard those terms mentioned in some statements by, by senior U.S. officials. But I, I really wouldn't read too much uh, into that. I think that it's sort of part of this broader theme that we've heard from U.S. officials for many months that basically sort of casts Pakistan in this context of, well, you know, we, uh, very anodyne language. We, um, you know, we, we support, uh, uh, I don't remember the exact terms, you know, we support um, rule of law and, uh, you know, we support elections and have no favorite, no matter who wins. That's another thing that we've, that we've been hearing lately, but it's just a statement. You know, it's, it's, there's, there's really not much else to it in my, in my view. It simply uh, is, is rhetoric. And, I go back to what I said before. My sense, based on conversations with with um, with Americans here, and also with uh, U.S. officials in uh, in Pakistan during my last visit there uh, earlier this year, when I spoke to um, officials uh, in in Islamabad and um, and uh, diplomats elsewhere in the country, the focus they want the focus to be on the economy. They don't want to delve into domestic politics and all of that. They want to focus on scaling up trade. It's not something that can really happen right now, given that the economic crisis is still pretty significant. But if the economy were to stabilize, I think that what the U.S. wants to do is just, um, you know, try to transform this relationship into something that's much less focused on security, certainly not focused on domestic politics and social issues, rights issues, tr focused on trade and, uh, and economic issues. So I think that's where where folks want to take the um, the that's where U.S. officials want to take the relationship if the economic situation improves. But they're just not going to delve into uh, to the domestic political situation, and they're not going to take a stronger stand. And the main reason for that is that well, there are a number of reasons. We don't have to get into this now, but one of the reasons is that you know the U.S. officials believe that they were dragged into Pakistan's domestic politics when Imran Khan made those uh, those completely false allegations about the U.S colluding in his ouster and they don't want to risk getting dragged back into domestic politics and especially at a very sensitive moment and of course you know elections will be coming up in, in just a few months so short answer to your question is that yes it is striking that you're hearing senior officials in the state department use those terms but it's rhetoric and, and i wouldn't attribute much else to it wow mike googleman I'm afraid we're out of time, Mike, but hang on before your, your final translation awaits and I need numbers. And in fact, today I'm going to ask you to weigh in with a little bit of Urdu. So uh, please tune in, Karen. Michael, we will speak with you Urdu. But you made an interesting point here, uh, uh, Mike, that yes, yes, for the sake of public diplomacy, Michael has advocated that the State Department should say that the State Department should crack down forge और ये जो हुकूमत पीडीएम की कर रही है जरूरी नहीं है कि इमरान खान की पोजीशन को अडॉप्ट किया जाए मगर ओवरऑल जो है एक जाति हो रही है क्रैक डाउन हो रहा है और उसके उसके खिलाफ माइक ने कहा है कि उसके उसके खिलाफ एक स्टेटमेंट जानी चाहिए मगर जो स्टेटमेंट्स अभी तक आई हैं जो मैंने पूछा था माइक से कि इधर के डेप्यूटीज इधर की जो डेप्यूटी सेक्रेटरी स्टेट हैं उन्होंने बोला है एलिजबेथ हर्स्ट ने बोला है खुद एंथनी ब्लिंकन ने बोला है मैथ्यू मिलर ने बोला है लोगों ने बोला कह रहे हैं कि ज्यादा इन स्टेटमेंट्स को ये छोटी मोटी स्टेटमेंट्स हैं इन्हें ज्यादा आप ज्यादा इनको रीड इन ना करें ये रेट्रिक है ओवरऑल uh, जो पॉलिसी है वो इकोनॉमिक पॉलिसी है सिक्योरिटी वाली पॉलिसी वो दिन चले गए पॉलिटिक्स uh, में जे एक जमाना जो होता था कि अमेरिका वे इन करता था पाकिस्तानी सियासत में वो दिन चले गए और शायद ये इसलिए है क्योंकि हाल ही में जो लोकल पॉलिटिक्स में जो इमरान खान ने जैसे Michael ने जो लव्स इस्तेमाल किया has been dragged into America has been dragged into local politics by Imran Khan कि जिस तरीके से इमरान खान साहब ने अमेरिका का तमाशा बनाया है शायद इसकी वजह से वो चा नहीं रहा रिस्क नहीं करना चाह रहा कि फिर से इन्वॉल्व हो पाकिस्तान की पॉलिटिक्स में आई होप यू हैप्पी विद दैट माइक गूगलमैन ऑफ द विल्सन सेंटर 
I was. I was concerned you were going to ask me ask me to translate that last uh, session. Thank you for, no, for stating that. No, what, it was very what well I'm done. going to what I'm going to ask you to to in fact, I'm going to put you in a spot is tell is tell us in Urdu what you think of my vlog, uh, Michael. Tell me about. Uh, I know you watch it. Uh, now you tell me about what you think of it. Urdu would be best, the preferred language. <laughs> right. Now, I was trying to think of uh, of what to say without embarrassing myself, and I've already gotten some uh, some some stage fright right now. And to be very honest with you, the Urdu that I know best is the Urdu that I would not want to repeat. You know, the the cuss words that are always directed at me in, on social media, uh, and the same ones. You know, one starts with C. Well, most of them start with a C. Um, now, Anyway, um, and then I was thinking, okay, maybe I could impress you and your listeners by singing one of my favorite um, uh, songs, uh, Lagare by, uh, by Shazad Roy. I, I don't know if, if, if you're a fan of that song, but that, that, no, that would embarrass me a lot. I like Shazad. I spoke to him last week, and Lagare is a good song, so please go ahead. Okay. <laughs> no, no, I just... <laughs> so I thought I would do, what I would do is just be very polite and say, uh, essentially, Buhat Shukriya. It's been great. Uh, I really appreciate you having me. I want to thank you for that. And uh, yeah, the blog the blog is great. I oftentimes don't agree with uh, with some of the things that are discussed on there, but that's fine. Um, and I always am, am honored to uh, uh, to be a part of your uh, your conversation. So uh, thank you for having me, Mike. I can't believe that after all this, I just get a bahut shukriya. Come on, you got to give me more, man. You got to give me more. <laughs> Time, the time, the the clock is ticking. I think that we'll uh, we'll need to wrap up. But uh, let me make you a deal. The next time I come on on the air, when I have a bit more time to prepare, I will prepare you uh, something, and I'll try to have a brief uh, conversation with you. That'll be my pledge. That sounds horribly like the State Department's pledge as well, Mike. But but thanks, thanks for IMFing me through this uh, through another round of uh, Michael Kugelman's Urdu adventures. Mike Kugelman, thank you uh, for your time. You've been great. Really, really insightful. Take care and talk to you soon. Thank you. All right. Michael Kugelman, our with us. His translation is with us. I have also done with us. Important mudda they have pushed us. Share, like, subscribe, comment. Keep your thoughts. If you have questions, ask them. I will try to answer them. I will give you the answer. With this, Pakistan, Zindabad.